Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and in this session we are going to learn about the concept of isostasy. So what is this concept of isostasy? Is it a force? Is it a phenomena? What is it all about? So we are going to talk about the details and also remember the top most important 8 theories of isostasy. So before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand what is this isostasy all about. So as we have learned about the interior structure of the earth in the previous session, and let's understand that what is this adjustment between the upper layers and the lower layers. How this adjustment keeps on happening. How this material from the upper layer goes to the lower layer and further again back it comes to the upper layer of the earth crust. So what is this stasi all about? What is this state all about? Let's understand. So the word if we talk about etymology it is coming from the iso which is equal and Greek word that is stasis that basically means station so at a particular place in a particular stationary position so isostasios coming from the greek it basically means in equipoise with or the equivalent to so what is equivalent let's understand the term isostasy was proposed in 1889 by american geologist c dutton all right so that's important to remember it does not mean that before this, the concept of this adjustment between the upper layer of the earth and the inner layer of the earth did not exist. It existed before that, but this particular principle or the word itself was given by the geologist C. Ditton. But the first idea of mass balancing of the earth's upper layer goes back to Leonardo da Vinci. So remember the great scientist during the Renaissance period. So the term means basically that Earth's topographic mass is balanced. So remember it's talking about a balance between the mass. So two things are there important. What is balance and how this balance is created between different masses. So isostasy is an alternative view of what Archimedes talked about the principle of hydrostatic equilibrium. So let's understand it furthermore. Now the theory of isostasy is a fundamental concept in earth system sciences based on opposing influence of two main forces. So what are the main forces? One is called buoyancy and the other is called gravity. Now remember there is a balance between buoyant forces and the gravity forces. What is this kind of balance? This is called equilibrium that we see. So, in the state of gravitational equilibrium between Earth's crust and mantle, how is it like, you remember the Earth's crust and then beneath that there is Earth mantle. So, how is this particular balance between these two maintained? The crust floats at an elevation that depends upon its thickness and density. So, two important things that what is the thickness and what is the density of the material. So, it is the idea that lighter crust must be floating on the denser underlying material. So now let's understand that what is this isostasy in a simpler way. Ideal theoretical balance of all large portions of the earth's lithosphere as though they were floating on the denser underlying layer that is asthenosphere. So it's not just denser but it also is viscous as we remember. It is deformed. So it is partially molten. Remember, as we talked earlier, so it is partially molten. So what happens? Because this is partially molten, so the upper layer tends to float on this one and move. So asthenosphere is a section of the upper mantle composed of weak and plastic rock. So isostasy is a phenomena or the importance of isostasy is as a theoretical phenomena of balance that controls the regional elevations of the continents and ocean floors that something is elevated something is below why is this topographical differences on the surface of the earth and what balances it so that is where this theory is important as it says that it is in accordance with the densities of their underlying rocks that matter so elevations of the continents and oceans are the functions of their densities largely and also of the density of rocks that lie beneath that surface. In other words, the Himalaya are floating in the denser magma with their maximum portion sunk in the magma. So that is something like 
how this looks the perfect isostatic equilibrium if you observe so there is some portion which is down and some portion which is up so this particular thing is dipped in this surface which balances it so this is what is happening in the same way as a boat floats in the water in a similar way so that is according to what we say is principle of flotation which is about the ratio 1 is to 9 so one part is above and nine part is below so this ratio is important the ratio of freeboard to draught ratio so law of flotation that we should remember so in the theories of isostasy what we find a mass above sea level is supported below the sea level at certain depth the total weight per unit area is equal all around the earth this is known as depth of compensation so let's understand furthermore so there are eight important concepts or theories for that matter which we should understand related to the isostasy concept so first important theory that we study is the theory of sir george airy in 1854 then theory of pratt in 1859 then dutton's concept as we know the principle of isostasy the concept of isostasy as a word itself in 1889 then theory of hefford and bobby in 1920s then theory of jolly at the same time then furthermore we talk about winning men's regional model which is also called flexural model and then theory of heskinen and then finally theory of Homes. So these are important eight theories or concept. Some places you'll only find six of them. Some places you'll find seven of them. But I have compiled all eight of them. So let's learn one by one and understand what are these theories all about. If you remember the word given by Clarence Edward Dutton, the principle of isostasy, the work in 1889. He talked about the level of Earth's crust is determined by the density. Lighter material rises forming continents mountains plateaus and heavier material sinks down so heavier material basically forms what the ocean basins and the floors so that was his concept in 1889 but remember isostatic effect was first documented by observation whose observation sir george everest's observation when he was working with great survey of india and he was talking about the isostatic compensation in the himalaya so later on in 1850s when this concept was being developed so we find the theories of airy and pratt as the first important theories related to isostasy long before the principle of isostasy or this word itself was coined so it was talked about as a phenomena so let's understand so the first important model or the theory that we say here is 1854 theory of airy so george airy talked about this isostasy concept whose this statement is important here so remember this statement if you want to remember his theory. So what he observed was uniform density and varying depth. So remember in isostasy theory there is something which is uniform and there is something which is varying. You just need to remember what is uniform and what is varying. So in the concept of airy all blocks have same density. So look into this image. When we see the density part of all these crustal blocks what we see the density is almost same. But what is difference here? They are different in their roots what we see. Remember this roots, these are different here, isn't it? So all the material have different roots. That's why it is many times also called mountain root theory because it explained the Himalayan region and other mountainous region. So thicker blocks have higher elevation and much thicker roots. So this was talked in terms of airy model where they say uniform density but depth is varying. So that is important. So higher ground is where lithosphere is thicker. So remember, as this height is there, as much will be the depth of the balance to be created because the material has same kind of density. So lower portion also has same kind of density, upper portion also has same kind of density. But this is lighter and this is heavier. But what is the difference here? Remember, the difference is about the thickness of the block. So as thick as it gets into the surface of the earth so elevation and thickness model or mountain root theory is the aries model that we study in terms of uniform density with varying depth so now let's study the second one the pratt's model of 1859 what does he have to say he said that uniformity is not there in density rather it is there in the depth so that was just opposite of the airy model so what do you see here in the image the uniformity is there in the depth of these material. Every material on the surface of the earth has the same depth that is important. But what they vary is in their 
density. So all the blocks float at the same depth but have different densities. So higher elevations indicate lesser dense rock. So which is higher in according to Pratt concept which has less density. So that will be higher. So higher ground is where the lithosphere is thicker having different densities. So this was the concept given by Pratt. So it is important to understand Airy and Pratt both. Remember, because Airy has uniformity in density, Pratt has uniformity in depth. So remember these two distinct theories. Now let's go to the fourth important theory that is theory of Hayford and Bobby that occupied lots of significance in 1920s. So similar to the concept of Pratt, they talked about volume of matter. So remember, the variation here was not density or depth, it was talked about volume of matter in the several columns. As we see the volume of matter in the several columns that we studied here in the previous theories according to the concept of Pratt. So remember, compensated by their density. So what is compensated by density according to Hefford Bobby? The volume part. So this volume is important here which is compensated by the density here. So in such a fashion that they exert equal downward pressure. So this is important here and then this concept was given of the level of compensation and thus balance of one another is created. So remember Hefford and Bobby defined this particular depth that said that the depth of compensation is 113 kilometers that is 70 miles beneath the surface of the earth. It meant that these columns that we study here are uniform at a particular depth. So basically all the columns that we see here are having same kind of depth even if they have different volumes. So that particular zone was located at about 113 kilometers. So that is called depth of compensation. So this concept was given by Hayford and Bobby. But remember as it happens in the science and scientific theories, theory of Jolly in 1925 contradicted the concept of Hayford and Bobby. So they disapproved the view of Hayford and Bobby. Why? Because they said that if you go 100 kilometers, as they said it was 113 kilometers, the depth of compensation, the level of compensation. Jolly said that if you go 100 kilometer, the temperature would be so high that this particular level of compensation would not be there. It will not be there only because of this pressure factor that would lead to liquefaction. So, so much of temperature and pressure, then the material will not be solid. It will be completely liquefied. So then that particular thing will not exist at 113 kilometers. So density varies above the level of compensation but remains uniform below the level of compensation. So he modified that theory. So the density will vary above only and it will remain uniform below the level of compensation because of this liquefaction factor that will be there 100 kilometer in the depth of the earth. Now, at the same time, when we see that lots of regional studies was also being done, so what happened in 1931? Weening Mintz, he talked about the regional model of isostasy. He talked about regional isostatic balance that is also called flexural isostasy. So, according to the other scientists like Gilbert and Barrell, there was a suggestion that the action of bending or curving of the earth happens, that is called flexure, happens in the lithosphere with a regional compensation of topography to explain isostasy. So this was important. Basically it meant that there is a compensatory behavior in specific region. So according to the airy, that concept further, he developed, that is winning means developed this concept. He used a flat earth model with crust being a load on the mantle, leading to the crustal roots of compensation as the airy concept stated earlier. But the surface of the mantle is elastic as we know and unbroken. So due to the load, the surface bends. So this bending of surface was explained in this flexural isostasy. So Weening Menz talked about this assumption that the crust is a homogeneous elastic plate floating on viscous mantle. So this concept was further there based on the local compensation given by Airy in the earlier concept.
Next theory at the same time that came was the theory of Heskinen. So in 1933, this combined the concept of both Airy and Pratt. So what we see is Airy and Pratt were the foundation stones in the concept of isostasy. So the other scientists who came after them, actually some followed only single and some combined. So Heskinen actually combined it. So what he combined? Aries concept of uniform density with varying thickness and Pratt's concept of varying density with different columns. So he gave the concept that density varies within as well and between as well, not just one. So within and between variation of the columns of the earth. Columns basically mean here the surface topography, the height above the earth's surface. So density of rocks varies both vertically as well as horizontally. So he talked about this concept in 1933. The eighth concept that is important here is the theory of Holmes in 1978. So remember 1978 was a time when science and technology already modified. It was lots of advancement in computer technology and quantitative revolution in geography. So what happened? The views of Arthur Holmes on isostasy to a great extent are compatible with the views of Airy actually. So the higher columns are standing because there is a lighter material below them for greater depth. So remember, more your height is there, it basically means to grip, basically to support this height, the beneath that material has to be soft. So that material is there that leads to the greater depth. So something of the same idea that Airy talked about. Whereas lighter material below these smaller columns up to lesser depth. So if there are smaller columns, then their depth is also smaller. So this concept was further given in 1978 by Holmes. Now an important question that we need to answer that who is correct, Airy or Pratt? Because all other scholars are actually talking about building of the theory on the basis of Airy or Pratt only. So Airy model for continental mountain ranges are significant. Remember Airy talked about the mountain root theory. So Airy's model is actually valid for the mountain ranges study. So continental mountains have this crustal roots that we say. But Pratt model is basically valid in the mid-oceanic ridges. Why? Because mid-oceanic ridges have topography that is supported by density changes. How? Because remember, mid-oceanic ridges where you have divergent plate boundaries that we study in details in the plate tectonic, what happens? Newer material is coming. So upper layer has different density while the lower layer has different density of material. So this particular place do not have one thing common that is density. So this varying density concept is valid in the mid oceanic ridges. So increased temperature at the ridges, rocks expand and their density changes. So whatever the density is on the surface is not there beneath the surface. So that's why remember airy is valid for mountains, Pratt is valid for mid-oceanic ridges. And lastly, the concept of isostasy played an important role in the development of the theory of plate tectonics. So remember 1960s when we say that plate tectonic model was fully developed, so isostasy played a great role. The concept of isostasy, the isostatic equilibrium and all the theories played a pivotal role in the development of plate tectonics and it varies in scale. So remember, the scale concept in geography that we say was also talked about in terms of isostasy. So right from the local to the regional that we say flexural isostasy to the thermal isostasy that we say that is the zona for the depth of compensation where there is lots of heating involved. So at different scales in the world we find this phenomena apt. So now, when we have learned about all the major important eight theories of the concept of isostasy, so I hope many of your doubts would be clear. But even if you have more doubts, please feel free to write me in the comment box below and I'll be coming up with more videos and answers to your questions. So all my best wishes, take care.